regreso aquí en Auto 060 en la edición de esta semana. Ya tuvimos ahí la espectacular presentación del Toyota Corolla en California. Y now we're going to switch to English because we have Paul Button, uh, past pr uh, president of uh, Southern Automotive Media Association. How are you, Paul? Fine, Javier. How are you? Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for uh, taking the time to talk to us here. And uh, so we're talking about uh, topless in Miami. And uh, still some people get confused with the title, but uh, it's nothing about fashion or like going to Miami Beach, but about convertible. So and Paul was in charge uh, of the boating. Somebody was supposed to help him with that, but he wasn't there, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I forgive him. He had a good reason. <laughs> yeah, as I was saying, I was in. The, I had to go to California for the global presentation of the Toyota. Corolla, which was a spectacular. Uh, uh, we just talked about uh, in the past segment about that. So, but let's uh, let's get to the business here. Third year about uh, topless in Miami, and uh, it's been a, a, a better and better success every year. Uh, this has been our, our third year. I believe we had 50 some odd uh, members show up the first year, and closer to 70 the second year and this year we had 72 take part. That's incredible. I mean, it's it's really a fun event and. Uh, and the other golf lucky thing was that the weather cooperated last last week. Uh, it was raining a lot here in Miami, and then I just stood up for it because talking about convertibles, you want to open the roof. That is absolutely right, and you're correct about the weather. Of course, I was a little concerned. It was cloudy earlier in the week and cloudy on uh, Wednesday. We had a cloudy and off and on kind of day, and everything was, was but everything was dry until right after uh, we took final pictures of all the winners and got them in and then the deluge. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, so the way this works is that all the members from uh, Southern Automotive Media Association, SAMA, uh, go to Key Biscayne and uh, test drive all the cars. This year were what, uh, 17 cars? No, 19 cars from 17 manufacturers, right? No, no, no. We have 17 from 14 manufacturers. Okay, okay. A couple uh, who had multiple entries there. We've had, uh, uh, we were supposed to have 18, but uh, a Bentley, Bentley, new Bentley there, uh, it was wrecked the week before. Okay. We had a little problem with it. Yes, for the record, it wasn't me. <laughs> I'm not a follow that one, too. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine what, what that guy's going through now. Exactly. So let's go. We had six categories. Uh, overall category was won by the Porsche 911 Carrera 4S Cabriolet. Really a fantastic car. I always have said that when people ask me about we we all drive new cars all the time, but uh, this is one of my probably the best the, the my favorite favorite car it was really it, it's really spectacular really a, a, a great car and uh it, it's performance looks everything about it is, is really just unbelievable yeah that uh, i mean obviously this is not a competition about performance and all that but that car has really a great engine a lot of horsepower and that fantastic pdk transmission with double clutch so uh, technologically, it's very advanced, but also the looks of it. The one that that won, we just have pasted, uh, posted the, the the link to Facebook and our Facebook page. Uh, a blue, a dark blue color with uh, black wheels, and so it was very, very nice. Yes, that, that is true. And there are, by the way, you can you can tell your listeners they can go to the website topplessinmiami.com, and they won't get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, you can actually. You, watch to it uh, at home uh, so the other category which uh, uh, the, the, the Porsche was there the exotic convertible right uh, we had uh, we had a new category this year we had the exotic uh, luxury convertible uh, the X, that was the Jaguar XKR which had won the luxury category the year before yeah and uh, what other cars were in this category well of course the Porsche was in the category and the uh, Mercedes-Benz SLS, which had won Convertible of the Year last year, was in that category. Yeah, very tough category because, I mean, all the cars are fantastic. And it's just like, as we were saying, it's not a performance competition. It's more like, how does the convertible work? I mean, what the performance actually opening it and, and, and opening down and closing it down. and uh, So those kind of things, right? That's uh, the, the criteria for voting? Uh, yes, it, and it is, you're right. It is a very tough competition. That's probably... Well, actually, all the uh, categories are pretty tough to uh, uh, score, but uh, the, co the, the competition seems to be getting closer and closer as the automakers uh, really throughout the whole uh, the automotive world increase the quality of their products. Yeah. So then, um, so the exotic category that was said, and then uh, the luxury category, another tough one because there's some very good cars in that in that segment. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, but I'm having trouble hearing you. Yeah, no, I was saying that the next category is the luxury. Uh, oh, yes, yes, the luxury. Very, uh, very tough, too. 
Yes, uh, some of them wonder what the difference between the exotics. Uh, the exotics were all six figures. Uh, oh, okay. So uh, that was the difference there. Yeah, the BMW uh, M3, this was the first year that, uh, well, no, I take it back. This was the second year BMW was in. They were in the first year. I don't believe they had anybody in there last year. The M3 won out. Uh, uh, there was probably oh, talked about a lineup, the M3, the Audi A5, the Infiniti D37 IPL, and the Mercedes-Benz E-Class. I mean, you can just, you could put those in a hat and, and draw the names <laughs> and you have a worthy winner. Yeah, people will be lucky to just drive one of them, any of them, really. But, uh, so it was a close, a close call, I guess, right? Yes, it was. Uh, that's like all the, all the, all the competition was pretty close. And, and in the next category, you're well aware the full size convertible with Chrysler 200 has stepped up there. A lot of people, uh, noted the improvement that has made, uh, with the BMW 135 and the Jeep Wrangler. That yeah. was, that was only three cars in that category, but, uh, that's been a category that we have, uh, kind of filled, filled around with to sell basically made up of cars that are below the luxury class but still seat uh, four people, at least four people. Yeah, and that's uh, some of the criteria to put above the list of candidates because, I mean, you have, as you mentioned with the exotics, they have to be over 100000 for uh, the basic price and then you got the luxury and then you have these uh, full-size uh, convertibles. And uh, this is another example of how Chrysler has improved in, in, in recent years. I mean, the, the 200, to be honest, uh, when they first introduced it, wasn't that good. But they, they have improved a lot. Yes, yes. There's a big difference between that and, and the Sebring that it replaced in there in a lot. Huge difference. Yeah. And then uh, you have the performance convertibles, another tough uh, category, category in which uh, the Nissan 370Z Roadster won. That has been... Uh, one of my personal favorites since it was introduced about, well, I guess, what, 10, 11 years ago now when it was brought back. Yeah. It has been uh, uh, really a steady uh, performer for Nissan. Uh, the other two entrants in that were the Chevrolet Camaro, which won uh, the family car last year, and we moved that into the performance. And yeah, I think it's, it's better fit there, I, I believe. Uh, the uh, Camaro fits a little better in performance. Better. Yeah. And uh, so, and then uh, a repeat, a three, three peat for the Fiat Avard. I mean, not for the for the same exact car, but Fiat has won every single year in this uh, topless in Miami competition by Southern Automotive Media Association. The third consecutive year that Fiat has won in the compact uh, category for convertibles. That that's an amazing car, really. Yeah, uh, it's kind of interesting. Every every you know they came out with the basic 500C, which won it the first year. Last year, I believe it was the Gucci edition. This year, it's the uh, Ambar uh, Cabrio. And your listeners might be familiar with that from the advertisements with uh, Charlie Sheen running around through the uh, through, through that mansion there. It's it's really a lot of performance. You could almost move that to the uh, performance category. Oh, absolutely. It's, yes, I, you're right about that. And um, so. Um, to be fair with with uh, with other manufacturers, like these are the cars that came to the competition. I mean, as you mentioned, the Bentley was wrecked in Boston, I believe, uh, so he couldn't show up. So these are the cars that come to the show. And so, like for next year, any other manufacturer wants their cars to be judged here at the uh, Topless in Miami, 2014. I mean, they have to bring their cars, right? Right. We put out a notice in, in January, uh, early February, late January that uh you know that we're having the event uh, we may not have the, the exact date by then but we always know what when we're looking for it and we give them the opportunity to enter uh any cars and models that they want we also give them the opportunity to say hey we wanted it in this class and or that that particular category and if we think it fits there we'll leave it there so they have the, the opportunity we had the uh, uh like yeah. I say, we had 14 manufacturers. Yeah, there were Mercedes-Benz, Nissan, Infiniti, Jaguar, Porsche, Chevrolet, Chrysler, Ford, Jeep, Audi, Mazda, Fiat, Smart, and Volkswagen. And I'm sure Fiat is going to try to come up with something for next year. Yeah, I don't think they want to. Yeah, I don't think they want to break that streak. <laughs> yeah, I was kidding with uh, the representative Ariel Gavilan, who was there the other night. I was kidding. I said, well, I guess we're going to have to name the trophy after Fiat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one. So we're talking to Paul Borden, past president of Southern Automotive Media Association, and who was in charge of uh, the judging here for uh, Topless in Miami 2013, which took place in uh, Key Biscayne last week. And, uh, and again, we have posted uh, the, the whole list of winners on our webpage, uh, so you can check in that. So, and there's also toplessinmiami.com. Right, Paul? That's correct. Well, thank you very much for your time, and uh, I promise to 
manage my schedule a little bit better next year so I can be uh, of any help next year, hopefully. Well, you were missed, my man. I'm sorry you couldn't make it. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you for that. And uh, again, uh, toplessinmiami.com. Go and visit SAMA Southern Automotive Media Association. A great event, and uh, I'm sure other associations around the country are looking at it, but they don't have our weather or our or luxury of paradise here in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> I know, we're, we're lucky there. Thank you a lot. Yeah, thank you. Have a good day. So ahí fue Topless in Miami, la, com la competencia de los mejores eh, convertibles del 2013, y como decíamos ahí en inglés en la entrevista con Paul Borden, no es que sean los únicos, sino que son los eh, autos que algunos fabricantes, en este caso 19, 14 fabricantes, enviaron sus modelos para participar en esta edición de Topless in Miami 2013, la tercera edición. El Fiat eh, ganó por tercer año consecutivo en la categoría del convertible compacto, y el ganador... El general de la competencia fue el Porsche 911 Carrera 4S Cabriolet, un auto súper magnífico. En el convertible exótico, el Jaguar XKR. En el convertible de lujo, el BMW M3. En el eh, Full Size Convertible, el Chrysler 200 Limited. Y en el convertible deportivo, el Nissan 370 Roadster Tour. Un evento eh, realmente eh, muy bueno y seguramente se va a repetir por muchos años. Y esto es Auto 060, yo soy Javier Mota y antes que me olvide, gracias a DJ Cafa y en los controles, regresamos aquí para otra prueba de manejo con el Smart Electric, también aquí por las calles de Miami.